Yesterday I was filming MMA and today I'm filming a jiu-jitsu tournament for ADCC. There's a chance that I am not going to get booked for Las Vegas at the end of the month, so I'm just taking this day just to get something on the calendar. You know, the process is lifestyle. It's just like I don't do it just for the competition. When people are talking about run and gun, this is the exact situation that they are referring to. I don't have any lighting. I just have to work with what's available, try to create shadow, try to find pockets of light. I have set my camera up to give me the best chance of success so that I'm not fiddling with it or tightening things or using my mental capacity to fixate on the camera rather than the action in front of me. I can just freely flow and move to what is most important, what needs to be recorded. I love these types of doc jobs because my two characters are over there, the athlete and the coach. The coach is Mike, the athlete is not, obviously, but I'm just following them throughout this tournament. There are matches going on all day, and it looks like our athlete is going to the finals, but I just kind of am just getting that inside, looking for the small moments as they go throughout their day. And one of the parts that I really, really like is when an actual scene happens. Like I see a story arc happen throughout a scene with multiple characters. And then once I get that, right after it finishes, I need to think of, do I need any more pickup shots, establishing shots, anything to give more context of what happened during that scene. Because that's what the editor is gonna need, um, not just the main action, but all the stuff that builds it up and gives resolution and just gives more information, more storyline, more context. So the, the more I do these doc jobs, the more I'm trying to train my brain to think in scenes and not just have the camera rolling at all times without any, any like definitive moments. So we just did an interview with this guy, basically throwing this mic on a bunch of different characters as we go through, talk with this guy, this guy, this guy, and just throwing this mic on, grabbing OTS. Good news, the Condor Blue monitor mount is holding its tension really well. I had to tighten it a bit. And the Sony FX6 handle is so well designed. I know some people don't like it because you have to use it for audio, but for me, it has everything that I need. And it's got that nice groove for your palm. It's got all these electronic functions, the hot shoe for the mics, XLR holder, mounting points. It's just, it's the best handle that I've ever used. Um, so I don't know why it gets so much flack. Um, could it be stronger? Yes. Could the paint not chip off as easily? Yes. And it would be nice to have XLR in the body. But other than that, it, it is a fantastic top handle. The joys of buying food while on site. 14 bucks. By the way, when I did that New York ESPN job, I walked so much and was literally limping at the end. I self-diagnosed myself with plantar fasciitis, maybe. Um, and it's still been coming every now and then, but I'm just trying to stretch my calves. That's what I've heard is the fix. And it's definitely much more manageable now. So if anybody has any plantar tips, let me know. I'm not the most familiar with these tentacles, but I do use them from time to time. And when I do use them, they go into the time code BNC port. So using a normal XLR is a little different. I'm figuring it out as I go. I had to use the tentacle app on this phone to um, sync them up. And then I put it into channel two and you have to put it on line. So you put it on line, I think, and I put it down to channel four. That way, when I'm monitoring channel channel one and two in my earphones, I don't hear the, if you ever heard what time code sounds like, it's, it's like extremely loud robot chatter. So I need to put that on a channel that I'm not monitoring. I think this is right. I also don't know for sure. I'm just figuring it out myself. I'd rather just use it in the time code port. 
As much as I love the idea of that new 7 Artisans lens, the 24 to 96, which with the extender on full frame, it's basically 35 to 150. As much as I love that with the the geared housing and the aperture ring and it's par focal and the lens doesn't extend, which are all things that you've heard me complain about. Besides all that, I really, really do like having autofocus just to make my life easier. When I'm doing these OTFs, we've done about 15 of them today, and I can just flick on the autofocus switch. It's already in face only, not face priority, face only. And then when I can register the person's face, it does not leave them. There's no chance of it switching off. It's really nice to have when the people are just slightly moving in and out, left and right, and the focus, I would be chasing it the whole time. If the Sony 28 to 135 came out with a Mark II, I really think it would hit almost everything on my checklist. Open. Don't judge the quality resolution of this. This is a screen recording of a IG story that I reshared, but this is uh, exactly why I like zoom lenses. So I was filming this guy and then we had Mighty Mouse, who is a world champion MMA guy who's doing jujitsu come in and just say hi my director tapped me on the shoulder and said hey get this i was e easily able to zoom out and get the two shot of them in action without skipping a beat this is why i prefer zoom lenses and our character has made it to the finals i got here around 8 a.m i'm gonna be leaving probably around six ish so the fact that our character did make it to the end is great for the storyline that's his competitor and like I said, when I'm thinking in scenes, I'm trying to think of what can I also get for the editor to cut to. This is Sam on his camera. He's got a, I think an 85 Sigma Prime. So he's just grabbing some cool shots and we're splitting it up like we did in New Jersey. That was also his production. I will be on gameplay and then he will be fixated on the coach. That way we can get all of the reactions and have both to play off of. So the character did win and the tournament continues. It's almost done. I don't know how this is gonna get chopped up, but I, I know my job is to capture the story as good as possible, right? That, that's all I can do and I wanna deliver the best that I can. So those small moments that I mentioned or the when I see people getting passionate, that's what I really need to tune into or else the day is kind of boring. And like always, transferring cards right at the end, there was an option that he said I could upload a Dropbox. I would much rather just hand it off. He has it and we're just, we're done. We can handshake and, and everything is clean. I love it when an opportunity comes your way, but you end up making it work for you. So this listing came up in Production Hub. It's five days of PA work. And since I've been on a PA kick lately, I said, why not just go for it, put something on the calendar? So I hit them up and I said, um, I didn't even know that utility meant an assistant, but since I've been working for a traditional broadcast like ESPN, that's what they call an assistant. So I said, hey, I'd be happy to be a utility. I also do cam op work for ESPN. That's a huge statement. And if you need a cam op or there's a need for it in the future, let me know. They said, great, immediately we'll book you for the five days of utility, add a sixth day to that, and we will put you in our vendor list as utility slash cam op. So I like it when you could just kind of reshape the parameters of what they're asking. It doesn't hurt. To, to give more information, you definitely don't want to be that guy who's like, I'm a director and I'm humbling myself to be a lower position for your production. You don't want to go that route, but I have found if you just provide a little bit more information, at least they know. I've been the, the drone guy before and they go, oh, do you actually like shoot other stuff? And I'm like, yeah, I shoot all this stuff. And they didn't know. There's a bunch of crows crowing. I don't know why. Um, but I just needed to get something on the calendar and the next month, April, is packed. I'm gonna go to Dallas for the solar eclipse, and then I have one week of surfing in Costa Rica, and then come back to do San Francisco. I am gonna do a meetup there. I'll put the details there soon. And then at the end of the month is West Palm again. 
So that West Palm client is kind of becoming a repeat and I think they want to do retainer clients. So I got to figure out that schedule with them. But now I have six more days of work on the schedule and I'm, and I'm not going to say the price because they asked me what's your rate because they're still, still sourcing crew and I don't want to ruin that for them. But I'm happy with what I got.